Matrix posits this idea of photoreal and immersive technology, blurring the line so that we can't discern what is real and what is artificial. Welcome to the Matrix. Kind of at an inflection point. Now, with the Unreal Engine, you can get much closer to the idea of the Matrix than one could do in film. Do you know about this? Yeah. It's all supposed to be a little unreal. We're at a point where a modern video game console can generate the kind of imagery that we generated on the movie 20 years ago, but in real time, interactively in front of your eyes. You know, it always used to be you'd have the script and then you'd have the storyboard and then you did the previs and then you would film it and everything would be filmed against the green screen and then ultimately a year and a half later you'd start to see your shots get turned into something. What just happened? And now you can do stuff in the Unreal Engine and render it out in real time. It really feels like filmmaking is still in the dinosaur age. Ready? Everybody? And action. 20 years ago, we asked ourselves how long it would be before faces and bodies could be changed as easily as we change clothes. This demo was unique in that we actually got Keanu Reeves, we got Carrie Ann Moss, and they shot footage for us with Lana Wachowski. <laughs> Lana's such a great writer, so she wrote this great little story between wow. Keanu and I. You still got it. Lana loves anything that pushes the envelope, so she was totally into it. The whole idea behind this demo was to question what is real. And we actually have a few shots of Keanu right next to Keanu digitally recreated. Hi, I'm Keanu Reeves. We're asking you, do you know which version is real? I sometimes miss this version of us. Me too. And then the really exciting part was we wanted to bring Neo and Trinity back to life. Real time aside, de-aging is like one of the hardest things to do. And it's like Keanu is different. He doesn't look exactly the same as he did 20 years ago. You know, we're like, oh God, we need we need a reference. Kim was like, hey Lana, we got I got some files to, for you to look at. And it was a bunch of files from Matrix Reloaded. We basically de-archived all the digital photography, the scanning, the performance that Keanu gave for the Matrix Reloaded. And we're able to use that to help build the young version of Keanu that we have in this demo. <clears throat> the hell are you doing back there? Sorry, I was told this is a sim preparing me to fight the system. Right on. We wanted to play a character, and we didn't feel that it was right for the player to play Neo or Trinity. We wanted the player to feel that they're going on this journey with their idols. We have a system called MetaHumans. So MetaHumans is our digital human creation system. And the first exemplary character that we put out was this character, Ada. I am a MetaHuman. And we're like, well, why don't we just take Ada and give her a Matrix costume? And, you know, because we're also well connected from making the first movies, I just, you know, I emailed Kim Barra and I'm like, hey, Kim, we have this demo. We need a costume. We need a costume for our principal character in this. Do you, want, do you want to come up with a costume so it's authentically Matrix? I found up a whole lot of old pen and ink drawings from the very first Matrix, which I'd kept. They were nothing that we used. They were all like old stuff. And so I'd kind of fished those out and started doing stuff based on some of them. She brought back Ed Natividad, who's one of the concept painters from the original movie, and he basically did a paint over on our character, and we're like, okay, that's our character. We're called her Io, and you look at the posters that we made from the digital characters, and it looks just like they've come out of a Matrix Reloaded photo session. From the very beginning of the project, we knew that we wanted to create something that expanded on some of these ideas from the Matrix. And there was this mega city in the, in the Matrix. When we designed the city, we decided to pick some of the most beautiful buildings with a lot of intricate shapes. And usually that's something that is a little bit scary when you have to do something in real time because it takes a lot of polygon and it takes a lot of computer power to generate that much detail everywhere. And that's where Nanite, our technology of virtual geometry, come into play. Virtualized geometry means you don't have to create levels of detail anymore. You just create a high-res model and you put it in the game. So the engine behind the scenes figures out exactly how much detail we should see, and the artist doesn't have to worry about that on the back end. You're not going to have modelers sit down and model every building, every window, every window frame. You have some typical styles that the artists like, and then you put variations through a procedural system, and then Houdini takes over and builds up all the buildings, and even side roads are built based on a rule, so you don't have to draw every road even. So that whole city gets built up by just a few major arteries that are drawn by the artist. So it's a small team that's building up this huge city. In the original trilogy, 
grids and things that are sort of mathematical feeling were subliminally intertwined in a lot of things. So for Awakens, we wanted to have that feel again. We didn't want to look completely like a naturally grown organic city. We wanted it to look like something that would have grown in the matrix, something that machines would have put together. And that was something that Lana had asked us to do, to make sure that a little bit of that pattern was visible. So we basically designed the city as a four kilometer by four kilometer, and then we designed it two main downtown, and then we created that large freeway to connect those two downtown together. It kind of reminds us of the freeway chase that we have in the Matrix 2 movie. In terms of the camera work, we use the original Matrix trilogy as a reference. And the one beat that we spent the most time looking at was the Matrix Reloaded car chase. It was very important for us to keep the same language of camera that we saw in the original Matrix. We were looking at how they film the chase, for example, and then how much the camera is actually shaking inside the car. And we wanted to make sure that that's the same amount of shake. And then when it comes to the lighting, same idea. We wanted to make sure we are close to the movies. So we have Lumen, which is global illumination, meaning that it's real-time lighting, and it actually works like light behaves in the real world. For example, we put a sun into the world, the sun lights up the road, the road then bounces that light back, and we get nice lighting that actually looks like it does in the real world. And then obviously you cover everything with the green that Matrix is famous for. And the mindset was all about, let's shoot this thing like Lana would have shot it, but going faster. We got some actors on a stage, we blocked it out. I put them in a car, I drove them down the street, I put cameras on that and we did a cut and turned it around to Lana very quickly to say, okay, what do you think? And we iterated on that. And then the best part is once you have found the place where you want to do the action, you spawn the car into the world, you grab one of the controller and then you play the car and then you start to drive in those streets. And then once you recorded that, you can do two or three times, maybe there's a better acceleration here, or maybe we can drift around here. And when you're happy with the action, you can lock that action and then refine and place your camera around that stunt. So it was easy for me to be able to put a camera on something and get all the beautiful final picture in camera. If I put a camera on Keanu and he's talking in a car driving 70 miles an hour, I can move the camera around, I can change the focus, just like a live action DP would have. It's pretty mind blowing. What just happened? I think a big part of it too is just the pacing of it. Finding that pace, finding that edit, making it feel more Matrix-like. We've gone like another click above what we did in Matrix Reloaded with crazy amounts of agents and cars ramming each other and flying up in the air. So all of that is simulated. Every time you play that in the demo, it is different because it's using mathematics and physics and particle effects and explosions. It's chaos. It, if I tell physics system, it's called chaos. All programmed in a way to behave as close as we could do to the way that you would look in a movie and being in the action. And it worked because the first time the people are playing it. You drive, I'll shoot. And they realize that they have control and it's interactive, but it looks exactly like the thing that they were just watching before. That's the aha moment. People are like, wait, 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 oh, wait. I can play this? This is crazy. It's just absolutely remarkable that Unreal 5 is capable of producing something that feels real and exquisitely detailed down to the most minute detail. This is something we never had. No one has ever had something like this. This is new.